Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to be making a floral wreath card today using my Prismacolor pencils and a stamp set from Honey Bee. And it's called Hello Gorgeous. It has a lot of different flowers in it, so you could do this with a bunch of these different ones. And I'm going to use that one I just pointed to. There's also some sentiments that go with it. And I'm going to stamp it using a light green ink from Lawn Fawn. You can use a lot of different inks. If you use a pigment ink, you'll just want to make sure you dry it really well. You can heat set it or just let it dry overnight or something to make sure it's good and dry before you start coloring with your pencils. And I'm using Prismacolor pencils and I put my colors up there on the screen for you. Although you can use any different kinds of colors as long as they col color over top of the ink that you've stamped in. And what I did was stamp this one particular bunch of flowers and I stamped it four times, once right side up, once side up, upside down, and then reversed it left and right. You could, and I didn't do this, you could trim your paper first so that it's square. It's going to help you get them aligned a little bit better. And I also used a Misty to help myself get them aligned. What I'm doing is coloring over top of the pencil lines and using the pencil lines as the place for the image to get darker. So if you want to use those generally with flowers, there's not a whole lot of worry about whether the light's coming from the right hand side or the left hand side, as long as you get some sort of petal shapes in there. And you'll notice that I'm using a little darker line right where the or darker color right where the pencil line or the pencil line, the stamp line is, and then feathering it out from there. Because the one thing you don't want to do is just have it look like you've traced over each one of the stamps. So I'm coloring a little bit over the line and then letting the color trail out from there, but not letting it be really consistent right beside that line. So in some places, It'll be a little thicker of color, a little, little wider of a line. And then other places, I'm gonna let it just be a little bit softer. This big flower was the one I had the most challenge with. I was trying to leave some white spaces so that I'd have room for some highlights. And I ended up picking Carmine for my second color. It didn't work out all that well because Carmine is pretty close to the crimson in terms of when you color heavy with it, I didn't retain a whole lot of depth. So then I had to figure out what to do next. And here I'll zoom in so you can see a little bit better. And I'm going to try to go back in with the Carmine and add a little bit more depth in there. You can see I'm just putting my shading right up to the lines themselves, but I'm not getting a huge amount of contrast like I did with that pink flower. So I'm taking a dark purplish color, black grape, and I'm adding a little bit of shading. And again, I'm not just adding a single line and you don't necessarily want to go around every single line. And I'm adding the shadow in those, those places where that line joins the next section. Cause that usually makes a crease of some sort, it defines a shape of some kind and makes that into like separate little petal shapes. So I'm going to go back over with my crimson again. And I thought I'll leave that and see if I want to do anything else with it later as I get to the end of this because all of these colors you're going to see a difference based on what they're next to. So if you have chosen some really contrasty colors, then that will affect the colors next to them. So if you, uh, if you want to have some shadows, you want to have them be somewhat consistent, either really strong contrast or not as much contrast around the whole thing, kind of depends on what kind of a look you want. So I'm going to make, of course, yellow flowers because that's me. I do yellow flowers all the time. That's just my gig, right? And here I'm going to put a dark brown center in the middle of it and go over again with that yellow color to deepen up the shade that it is. And you'll notice none of those flowers look like they had green stamped lines because I used a really pale green. Use the palest color you've got. And I was going to use yellow, but I've been using a lot of yellow for doing a lot of things, but yellow would be a good color to do this with as well. You'd have a little less trouble covering the, the line itself, but at least here you get to see literally that 
those green lines are disappearing as I add the colors right on top of them. This is a really good example of why it's really important to have sharp pencils when you're coloring too because I stopped quite often to sharpen my pencils or a lot of times I sharpened every time before I put the pencil out here on the paper. Um, so you'll, you'll want to keep it good and, and sharp because that's what's going to give you the sharp edges around everything. If you end up using a clunky big fat pencil, pencil line that's not sharp, you won't end up with really fine details at all. This did take a long time to do. I might recommend you do something with slightly bigger flowers in them because this did take quite a while when I had to do it all four times. You're not going to have to watch me do it four times. No worries. But one of the things that I thought that I would give you as a recommendation as I was doing the other flowers is to do all of one flower. Like do all your yellow flowers around the whole thing, then do all the pink flowers and keep rotating that way because you'll learn something from doing it once. You'll do it better the second time and then the third time and the fourth time. And it also means you'll change pencils a little bit less often. And you'll remember which colors you used when you go from one to the next. Because on these pinks, when I did the rest of it, I didn't exactly remember which one I had used for which flower. Should have written that down. I had to go back to my footage in which I said the color name out loud for myself while I was yammering, while I was coloring, and then I had to go pull that out so I could remember which color to use and which color to put on the screen because I like to put that out there for you. I know a lot of people like to use exactly the color that the person on YouTube uses, but I always encourage you to try something different. Because it's already been done when the person does it on YouTube. They already have experimented with that color. Try other colors too. And see what you can come up with on your own. And I know um, with coping markers it becomes a big issue. And then also with pencil people want to know exactly which colors. But really the brand of pencil does not seem to matter a whole lot. Um, there's a few pencils that don't have very rich color. So they're a little more on the waxy side, but for the most part, I found lots of different brands of pencils are pretty good and pretty, pretty good for paper crafting. You're not going to have a whole lot of issues with most of the pencils that I've seen out there and tried. Did try some, a different brand recently. I am going to probably stick with my prism colors because these are the ones that I have um, the full set of. And I actually have two full sets because I saw them on sale once and I had to buy them a second time. So if anything ran out, I had another. I know. Yeah, I, I have a sickness. It's called full set syndrome. Raise your hand if you have it too. <laughs> uh, we, we get that sometimes when we love a medium and I've always loved my prism color pencil since back in my college days. So I'm making one more pink flower. And again, I'm adding a little bit of that black grape to add a little extra dimension there. And then in between each one of the flowers, wherever there's a really dark space underneath, I'm adding just a few, not giant lines of it, just a few spots to add a little bit of dimension. Now we're getting out into all the little fronds and things in this stamp. And I'll do some in yellow, some in red, all different kinds of things. There's a couple of arrows and I'll use two different browns for those. And I'm basically using the same browns that I used on that yellow flower center. Just carrying those colors throughout. And the greens I'm going to leave as the green ink. It's a really soft green and I kind of like how it looks. So I'm going to leave that as it is. And then finish up these little guys all the way around the edge. Just do a little flicking with the pencil. And now... I have magically, look at me, look how fast I am. I completed all those clusters of flowers and I'm just going to add a few berries in between because the berries were the easiest thing. You could draw another whole flower in there, but there's those tiny berries that you can just follow exactly what was done. You can either draw the berries first and then add stems or draw some stems and then drop some berries on. And I'm going to add some in between and then a little bit on the outside 
because then when you have a full rounded thing, it doesn't look like you have, I don't know, it looks like there's like clusters of flowers and then a big empty space, clusters of flowers and empty space. So just adding a little more of those lacy berries, those little branches tends to just soften it out and make it look like one big beautiful floral wreath. And then all I had to do was take some matching coordinating pieces of cardstock, pinks and yellows and greens, and I added a couple layers and I think that would be a really beautiful card for somebody to put on their mantle or on the kitchen shelf or something beautiful to decorate their home after I send them the card. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will find some flower stamps that you have and try making a card like this. You can click on the videos that are here. You can click on my face to subscribe to my channel and I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye bye.